Yeah, it's the monsoon storm, so I'm shooting flies. Wow. <laughs> I got a bat in my camp somewhere. Huh? Oh, God. It was dive bombing last night and got it, like, trapped out on the porch. And I think it's been here all day. And now it's getting dark. So if you see me ducking and diving, that's what's <laughs> going on. I got a bat bombing me. So just drink beer. It'll be all right. What do we want to start with tonight? Dropped my bottle opener. I need to see if I can find it. What'd you guys find for beers? Um, for American wheat, I got the Boulevard Unfiltered. <clears throat> so I haven't poured anything yet. And uh, I got Ho Garden. Yep. For Hess, I got the, I never could pronounce this wife, Stefan on her. Yeah, I got mm -hmm. the, got the same one yep. for the Hess. Nice. Uh, all I could find was Ailinger. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. Ailinger is all right. Yeah. Which one do you guys want to start with? American wheat? Sure. It's my least I favorite. I got a harpoon. Yeah. I had harpoon, an, nice. I had an Oberon leftover from the last one. So. All right. Perfect. <laughs> Our new guy, Jeff, did he didn't, didn't make it? Mm, he hasn't come on yet. How was everyone's week? Not bad. Busy. Yeah, I still Good just I still just get grass off this. It was an okay week so far. It's actually my uh, yesterday was my twelve year anniversary working for Upland. So, wow, That's nice. Do you get a gold Rolex? <laughs> I work in the beer industry. Like... Yeah. Yeah. You, got <laughs> you, got a high five and yeah. you can have an extra six pack. Yeah. Have you bottled you... your beer yet or you caked your beer yet that you were brewing last week? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's one weekend. It's, uh, almost at final gravity. Uh, it actually tastes good. Um, I'll let it sit another, probably another week before kegging. I'll uh, do a diastole rest and cold crash it. I kegged a Saison, no, kegged a Saison on Monday. Mm. So that will be, um, we do a monthly gauntlet in our homebrew club. And so uh, we'll be, I'll be challenging the other uh, members of the club again with the saison so and i know somebody did a um a wild g saison so that'd be interesting to see how that turns out so mine is just a traditional saison um luckily it's warm here i just threw it in the corner and forgot about it for six weeks <laughs> and let it sit it was about 80 degrees and so it uh i drank a few pints last night i'm happy with it so Good. so get it get it carved so it's it's carving right now and so I'll serve it tomorrow. So what do you think the wild yeast would be like in, in you know, you're Arizona, right? Arizona yeah. dry. Yeah, have, or have you been yeah. having rain or dry? I mean you kinda of... uh we're in rainy season. I know yeah. the guy he did it um before the monsoon started. So um and we have a lot of ponderosa pine, mm, okay. a lot of yep. uh, native grasses, mm -hmm. um weeds and things so it's uh it's hard to say what he would have picked up yeah um, but it shall be interesting cool. cool he seems to be he seems to be pretty happy with it and i know he's had a few of them and he's really happy with it cool oh that'll be good i just don't get into funky beers and doing that i thought about doing a whole separate brew system and then doing all glass carboys to to, to do experiment with some spontaneous fermentation but it just makes me nervous to infect everything there's a reason yeah, I know. there's a reason our main brewery and our sour brewery are so far apart yeah mm -hmm. exactly By miles <laughs> yeah i remember um it's been it's been a number of years because of covid but every every year we have um arizona brew con and it's a commercial professional um one day uh lectures and 
demonstrations and lots of drinking and uh there was a a breakout session all on uh sours and upland was there Mm -hmm. so um and they were talking about their separate brew house and everything so i was like man that's a lot of money do you remember do you remember who was there no but i'll see if i can find my uh my uh lecture brochure that and i'll let i'll let you know how long ago was it probably four years ago so it was maybe probably, five it was probably eli tringle and um adam cubby the adam sounds familiar yeah. but I'll, I'll have to see if i can find uh the brochure from that day because you have like a, um our keynote speaker on that one was uh, Greg Odell from Odell's Brewing, and then then you can go the business side or the brewery side and do different lectures, and then uh, all the Arizona breweries that are at this they bring cases and cases of beer and crowlers and everything, and it's just like a free for all, help yourself. Yeah. So by the end of the day, there's not a lot of learning. <laughs> That's a uh... That's that's the majority of the beer or anything that I go to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah um, CBC in 2024 is in Vegas, yeah. which is like less than four hours away from me. Nice. So I think we're going to that, and then uh, 2023 Homebrew Con is in San Diego. Nice. And yeah. so that would be fun. Did you get it? Got him. Oh yeah. <laughs> Shot it right off of my road to Cicerone book <laughs> i uh i actually may be going to the 2024 cbc so i might actually get That'd to meet awesome. you in person <laughs> yeah cool no, I'm, I'm looking forward to it uh um see how many people we can get to go up um from around here because going to vegas it's like oh this is going to be amazing mm. and then once you're in vegas park your car hop on the monorail to anything and and have no worries so, That's good. Going back to beer, I feel like right. I should get a different American wheat and see if I dislike it as much as I dislike Oberon. <laughs> um, Not for you, huh? Yeah. This one from Boulevard in Kansas City yeah. is pretty good. Yeah. Um, and I get lots of uh, the clarity is garbage, but it, yeah. it is American wheat. Um, lots of, I get fruit. I did get just a hint of the grass. Uh, but not as bad as Oberon, and it's got a nice aroma. It's pleasant. It's it's crushable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This harpoon is as well. Harpoon makes good beer. Four point four percent alcohol on this one, and I did lay out the flashcards. Ah, uh, all right, good. So, I'm going American. Be- Speaking, okay, good. speaking of the flashcards, uh, I did want to say that we should probably really try to uh, refer to things as style names, like we keep referring to a, a Hefeweizen, so it was one of those, like, I yeah. had to look it up, and I looked up Hefeweizen, and I was like, wait, that's not what it is, it's a... <laughs> Weiss beer? Yeah. yeah. Weissen. Weiss yeah. beer, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it. So the American Wheat, uh, SRM is three to six, uh, straw to gold. This one's probably a little bit more straw. Uh, Perceived bitterness, um, it's moderate, 15 to 30 IBUs. See, I get more bitter off the Oberon. Like it it tastes more, maybe it's just not hidden very well, but because it it feels like it's more bitter than like a 30. Um, yeah, and this one doesn't feel very bitter. I just feel like I get grapefruit rinds on the back end mm-hmm. and not like a hot bitterness, like more like a fruity bitterness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's similar with the uh, harpoon. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, alcohol, uh, four to five and a half percent alcohol. Uh, flavor and balance, light malt flavor includes flour and bread notes from wheat. Hop character varies from low to moderate, does not have the clove banana fermentation traits of a German wheat beer. Um, To be honest, I'm not getting very much malt on this at all. 
So it's the carbonation seems higher. Yeah, the the carbonation on the Oberon, I would actually state as high. Um, yeah. Um, which, and so I think that's kind of hiding some of that malt, but yeah, I just get a lot of fruit. So I mean, I get I get high carbonation, the carbonic acid bite. I get grass and hay, and I get bitter, and that's pretty much all I get from the Oberon. But apparently, and I know both. Both Oberon and Boulevard are classic yes. American wheat styles in the BJCP now. Which is also so, funny because the Oberon is 5.8%, which is Oberon. Uh, yep. a, little, a little high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Hogarten? Sure. Or good to me. Who Garden? Who Garden? I do love it. I was told once that that's how you actually pronounce it is who garden. Uh, I don't yeah, know. There we go. I don't know if it's actually true or not, but I've ever since I've called it who garden. I'll go there. I didn't check the the date on this bottle, but uh, it's got two days until the freshness expires. Ah. It's still within. <laughs> yeah. And I noticed um, where the total wine that I got these beers at. Um, there were a couple uh, German pilsners that I were looking at that were like over a year beyond date, but the store has been open less than a year. So the distributor just unloaded just a bunch of old beer uh -huh. on them. Uh-huh. Oh. Uh -huh. Well, I got a few months. Mine says freshest before March 16, 2023. So that's pretty nice. That's not well, you're on the right. East Coast. It takes a while yeah. to get, to, to get over true. here. Yeah, I gotta gotta work it across the country here. So March fifteenth. Yeah. Hey. Twenty twenty three. I think we're yeah. drinking for the same bash. Ooh, perfect. Nice. Yeah, I'm eight nineteen twenty twenty two. That's cool. So I get the I get carbonation right away, and the and the uh, I think it's the coriander, isn't it? The the upfront. Either that or the yeast. Which is it? Wait a minute. I'm not getting coriander. You getting yeast? Mm -hmm. Lemony, yeah. I just, from like pouring it to my nose is probably seven to eight inches and it's, you could smell it strongly. Mm -hmm. and that's, you, you feel that's lemony? The yeah, yeah. Aroma is lemon. I haven't tasted yet. Yeah. Which is one of the. <laughs> That's two. <laughs> <laughs> cool hand loop, yeah. I like the nose on it. Mm hmm. Yeah, this one's like lemony and kind of like fruity and. I mean, it does. I get bready. You get bready? Bready. But with the lemon and the fruit, um, I, actually, I like this beer. Um, I get like white bread. Ah, uh, yeah, I agree. I was taking notes earlier. White bread, yep. Roman lemon. It may you be get the esters on the, on the flavor, the little bit of the. The yeast ester. That's, I get like that Belgian -y yeast. Mm -hmm. I think it's been too long yeah. since I've eaten white bread. I should probably eat a slice of white bread. <laughs> <laughs> Just to remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite like saltine cracker. It's not crackery, but it's, it just reminds me of just like soft white bread. Yeah, this is a beer I could, especially at four point nine percent. This is a beer I could drink all day. Yeah, like this is this is a great like hot weather beer in my opinion. Yep. This would be like mm -hmm. super refreshing. Um, yeah. Yeah. What would you pair this with? Mm. Seafood, I, maybe some. Yeah, I was gonna say like a a white some like light white fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't eat any seafood, so, uh, but I, 
I think I have had lobster, which I despise, but I think oh, it's a go, go nice yeah. with mm-hmm. lobster. Um, if you were doing the butter thing, the carbonation would help cut the, yeah. the butter between mouthfuls. I forgot to silence that. Um, mm. just, I, yeah, I think like summer grilling some like, um, a salad with some grilled fish on it or yes. something like that. Really light, yeah. even, a brun- even brunchy stuff like eggs or something. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I like, like a bullshit. lemon tart or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's something for the next week, whatever beers we pick. Um, and I'm game for whatever. Um, also bring like a list of food pairings. That's a good yeah. idea. See, I would love this on like with like ribs or something like that because it would cut it would cut the richness of the ribs really well. Like, Rich. Yeah. I was actually thinking even hot dogs. I don't care. Like I would just <laughs> drink this. My first, my first thought was brought why uh, brought worst, and then I'm like, yeah. mm-hmm. but you know, ribs would actually like be even better because you've got all the, yeah. you got all the sweet and the tangy and the fat and everything from the ribs and meaty, and yep. this would like cut it really well, and I think it would go well with it. I agree. <laughs> I'm thinking like maybe like even like a tangy coleslaw or something. I don't know. But um, so I have. Has anyone not uh, texted Jeff to make sure that he knows that? I don't have his number, and I know he was in for the first uh, few when uh, Allo was. Oh being yeah, in. yeah. So um, let me see, messenger. Uh, I'll send it. You're going to get this as well. Oh, Jeff. Can you message? Awesome. Thank you very much. How are you joining us? <clears throat> okay. Direct message to him. To see if he comes back. Um, so flashcards for the wit beer. Um, straw to light gold. So uh, two to four SRM. I do think just a side by side of the American wheat versus um, yeah. the wit. It is lighter. That the American wheat was three to six. This is two to four. Um, bitterness is low, eight to twenty IBUs. So lower than the American wheat because Americans have to bastardize everything. <laughs> And uh, alcohol, four and a half to five and a half. So actually pretty close to uh, the same levels for the American wheat. Mm-hmm. Uh, spicy wheat ale with refreshing flavors derived from both fermentation and the addition of spices such as coriander and orange peel. Uh, notable for using unmalted wheat for 50% of the recipe. A Belgian ale with a long history. Wit beer died out in the 1950s only to be revived by, in the 1960s by Pierre Sellis. Uh, popularity has since grown immensely. So, yeah, then we get Blue Moon out of it. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I know Sellis, he, he was a delivery guy or something in the Belgium. Milk and then, man. And he was took the milk it man. over. Yeah. And uh, he was the milkman, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, he took the brewery to Texas. That makes sense. We were, I'm just doing the Belgian the Belgian section, like major fire. He had to sell out to Stella et toi, and then yeah, yeah he, gave, he gave. I think he did like more than fifty percent, and then sold the rest and moved to moved to Texas. Started Stella's Brewery yep. under his own name. Brewed I think a white his daughter, beer there. Daughter yeah. might be running it now. I think so. I think it's now part of somebody else, though. I think he got bought out again. Yeah, you all get yeah. bought out. Yeah. Anytime you get a good beer, you get bought out. 
I've been doing a lot of study of like history, the history of lager and other stuff, and like the amount, yep. the amount of places that, for, that Stella owns is insane. Like I know, yeah, well, it's, like, I know it's crazy. Looking at the American breweries, short of I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Modern Times, but they're a, a large scale california brewery they got bought out by maui brewing but everybody else has been bought out by foreign entities yeah. stone to sopro uh bells and new belgian yeah. to kieran um ab is obviously ab um it's like they're getting bought up uh lagunitas mm-hmm. firestone walker boulevard um, Brooklyn, Brooklyn's owned, partly owned by a Japanese company. Yeah. It's like they're all being bought up uh-huh. by these foreign entities. It's like if you want your retirement plan and have some money, build a large scale brewery and sell it to some foreign country. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, and then the one out here, Omegon, mm-hmm. Omegon yeah. Gang is uh, Morgat, uh, yep. the one who does has Duval. 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 Yep. Duval. Duval. Um, so I think they got their yeast range. East strain. Uh, man, I can't think of the name right now. The Oma Gang uh, Saison. Um, Hennepin. Hennepin, one of my favorite beers of all time. And we finally, it was gone forever on Arizona shelves. And now it's finally starting to come back because Oma Gang started doing like those, they got into the hazy market. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yep. Rainbow whatever. Yeah. Um, which was not a bad beer, but it's like, Dude, you guys are so good at what are you doing? Yeah, Belgian doing Belgian and uh-huh. French beers. Don't screw up, and they jumped in the the hazy game. Speaking of foreign, have you guys heard the the news out of northern Mexico? And what's going on there? Yeah, so at least temporarily, but is likely to go <clears throat> permanent. Uh, no more brewing in northern Mexico. Uh-huh. Oh, that's on? like that ruins like Tecate and everybody. Yeah, so Tecate, um, uh, Dos Equis, uh, mm-hmm. um, freaking um, Corona. Uh, it's it's all where's Medela? Yeah, where they come from? Medela is from there as well. Um, yeah, it's it because of the the massive drought. Uh, the president yep. signed it in. Like they can't. The the company so water juice, yeah. The companies are welcome to move to the southeast of uh, southeast Mexico, but like, think about all of the size of those places. You're talking about uh-huh. billions of dollars to move all of those places. Um, mm-hmm. Man, these water yeah, issues. Which, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know much about water issues living in the Northeast, but John, you you know what the hell is going on with the oh, it's, the it's, water it, and it's rivers? bad here. Um, like right now we're, we've been getting good rain and I don't even care about the flash floods. It's been good rain, but our lakes and everything and aquifers are not fed by our summer rains. It's our, the snowpack in the Rockies and it's just been garbage. But yeah, yeah, when I lived in, uh, lived in Maine, it's like, there was just water everywhere and everywhere you went, there was a Creek, a lake, a pond, Mm -hmm. whatever. And it's like here, it's. Uh, they found a fifth body in Lake Mead because the water so is just, it keeps on dropping. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, uh, we're so, in like a little bit dry here this year, but nothing like that. You know, it's going to rain tonight into tomorrow, you know, nothing. Um, we're, I think we're yeah. pretty, I think we're pretty normal here. Like, if anything, it might have been like a wetter summer than we're used to. My tomato harvest isn't great because, of, like, there's been enough water that it's, like, cracked my tomatoes. Yeah. 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 Um, and then the power for Vegas comes out of Lake Mead. Yeah. And so if it drops much lower, they won't be able to do hydroelectric power, and Vegas counts on that. So Vegas goes black. It could be interesting. Oh, Yeah. Talk about billions of dollars in loss. <laughs> to be All fair, right. though, 
they built a major city in the middle in the of desert. the desert with okay. nothing around. <laughs> you can thank the mob for that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be some wild times, you know, how things shift or change or you <clears throat> can't keep going where there's no water. So the thing, the thing that I'm wondering about is what's going to happen to Southern California because they are having the same drought that Mexico is. So <laughs> like, and you've got a lot of breweries, a lot of major breweries there. You've got a, some of the best breweries in the world are there in Southern California. Like that could. Um, and they're the federal government is cutting our allocated water again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just gonna. And a lot of the produce for America is grown in the Southwest, which is dumb. Like, move that to Tennessee. Yeah. I know. But, we got water. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but in the Southwest, we have labor. Um, I, know. Yeah. I hear you. So, yeah. 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 I work but, in um, agriculture. I get it. We we have a few that make it this far north, but mm, yeah. man, it is it is a big deal. Of yeah. So just I, I drove over to San Diego and drove through the, the farmlands and they're pumping the water. Yeah. So, but um, that's like yeah. growing alfalfa and hay here mm -hmm. for livestock. It's, right. that's, that's a right. very de dependent. Um, the, only, the, only thing is, the only thing that's really cool is that you know, here, in, here in Vermont, you cut grass for hay and you hope it doesn't rain so you can get it dry enough to yep. harvest and bale up. In, you know, in the Southwest, they turn the water off, cut it, and it's dry in like a few hours and they bail it up and they got this awesome hay where, you know, we're, we're very jealous of that here. But then again, we get all this rain. So it's kind of like, a, you know, all these trade offs. All right. So voice beer. Let's start yes. voice beer. Got mine uh, poured. Um, hazy, hazy. Very. And like more, uh, it's a darker, more mm -hmm. orange color. Mm -hmm. yep. which is weird because this is quite a bit darker than the American wheat, but they're nearly the same SRM. Huh. So. Oh, yeah, yours is really dark. Mine's not that dark. Yeah, yeah. about the same, but, though, I guess. Yeah, I called it light gold. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you you guys have the the same beer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that looks, that looks darker than mine. Yeah. Yeah, this doesn't have like a, this has a date code that I can't read, so. Um, I don't think mine's good. No? No, I'm getting a butter. Uh-oh. Yeah. <clears throat> mm, I can't read the date code on this one either from Germany. L O L two O two five. That doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah, six three zero one. Well, I'm not getting butter, so at least it's not not that. I get definitely get wheat flavor. Almost like I have a, a still like a lasting white frothy head, but. On the mouth feel like almost zero carbonation. It's there a little bit, but I get the wheat, get a little bit of clove. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but of these three beers, this is probably my least favorite. It's weird because Hefeweizens tend to be one of my favorites, and yeah, I'm I'm wondering if this bottle's just really freaking old because I'm not getting any clove, definitely no banana, like this should should be getting banana. Um, getting like slight buttery and like a slick taste to the uh, uh, mouthfeel. I agree um, with the slickness. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I am getting some wheat. Yeah, and I know that this one was stored cold. I got it cold off the shelf. Um, oh. Yeah, it's like how long did it sit on a shipping container in New York City before going out? Yeah. I'm glad I kept some, uh, some of the 
Who burden? Rinse your palate cleanser. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm afraid I'm not going to drink any more of that. And what sucks, this is like a $5 bottle. I almost got the big bottle, but I, I'm like, no, let, let me be smart and go with the 12 ounce or 11 point whatever this is. They didn't have uh, 11 two. They didn't have that. They only had the big no. bottle. So I had, I had a choice between the two. So yeah, 500 milliliter. Yeah, that I will. That's have, sad. Would that I will probably have drank uh, maybe 25 milliliters of. Yeah. Are you good with the uh, the liquor store to go back and say you got a bad one and see if they'll credit you? Yeah, I'm. I, I'll give it a try. I'm. I'm friends with a couple of the people there, so maybe. Um, we'll see. Yeah, our liquor store here. I've gotten some out of date ones, and they're like, and I I let them know because they're friends of mine, yeah. just so they don't sell it to somebody else who's gonna get upset. And they're like, come in and get a credit. I'm like, I don't care. So, but yeah, I was they, they could. The last two times I've been in there, I've been trying to get some Amstel Light to get used to it, uh, to get like, and um, both times I grab it off the shelf, I look at the date and was like, no, no thank you. There was, uh, oh the, the Best Buy was last month, <laughs> and I keep telling Oof. people like Best Buy last month, Amstel. Even if it was it. fresh, it still would be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right. Anything more on Hefeweizen or Weiss beer? Or shall we? Um, yeah. Uh, Strata Gold, two to six. I do think mine's a little bit darker than that. Uh, wow. Low bitterness, eight to 15, which I agree with. Mm -hmm. uh, 4.3 to 5.6 ABB. It's like, why can't they just round it off? Yeah. Um, uh, flour like maltiness of wheat balanced by clove and banana fermentation flavors and high levels of carbonation. I didn't get high levels of carbonation on my beer, mm, but no. and I got the clove and I got some wheat. Uh, Weiss beer has fluctuated in popularity over several centuries, but today is quite popular in Bavaria and beyond. Brewed with at least 50% malted wheat fermented with a unique yeast strain that produces banana and cloves. That's it. So a wit beer is, is, is that malted wheat mainly or is it raw wheat? Or does it make a difference? Did it say? Uh, wit beer is unmalted. Unmalted. Yeah. And um, Weiss beer is malted. Okay. Yeah. If someone handed this to me and asked me what it was, like, I would not guess a heavy, like, no, agreed. Not mm -hmm. agreed. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna have to find a different half and and do a side by side comparison of just halves because this I feel like this is something that they could ask you mm -hmm. in a tasting panel. I'm like, yeah, this is one of the things in the Belgian Road to Cicerone thing. Yeah. Do a wit beer, a Weiss beer, an American wheat. And compare and contrast. So you can, if they put it in their own workbook, yeah. you figure they're gonna, they like that. Um, I did a, uh, there's a, there's a bunch of webinars on Road to Cicerone tasting together that yeah. they did during COVID, yep. and they did a um, whole description of the tasting exam for, for certified and and advanced, mm -hmm. and then they did he um, he compared and contrasted a wit beer and a American wheat. So it takes a lot of time talking about crap, but then when he gets to the good stuff, you're like, oh, well, that that was helpful of, you know, what's coming and what they do and how he would approach it as the guy who writes the friggin' test. So that wasn't, uh, that was a little helpful. So if you guys get yeah, a I watched to to that, a lot of those uh, tasting together with, yep. which were great. Um, Pat Fahey's, yep. I think he's a fantastic presenter. Um, and then Neil yeah. Witte is the other one. Yep. But, yeah, I like to watch Pat uh, do his stuff. And then um, the I sent you guys a thing this morning. Um, well, it's probably midday for you guys. Um, yeah. But uh, that they did a whole thing on the certified beer exam. Mm -hmm. But there was one on uh, beer flavor and aroma. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was interesting. I watched it this morning. 
Um, and it's it still seemed like relevant information for us. Yeah. Speaking of speaking of that, our uh, our sections this week. I feel like yeah. I feel like my section. I I've got questions, all of that. I feel like I could do my my section again next week because it, there's so much to it. Yeah, there's a lot in there. Yeah, it's all about yeah. all, all flavors and like stuff like that, mm-hmm. which, which is incredibly important. This is the stuff that we, oh. at least yeah, this is stuff can... that I definitely need to study. Yeah, we certainly can double up for yeah. sure. Do you want to do some questions back and forth? Did we do all the cards? We did all the styles, We right? did all the cards. We did all the cards. Yeah. All the styles. Oh, uh, well, do we want to say anything about what we would pair ah, a half yes. with? Mm. Mm. Well, this beer, I wouldn't pair with anything. Maybe, <laughs> maybe... I'm um... throwing yours out. Yeah. <laughs> pair it with the garbage disposal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Well, I think German food. I think bratwurst, mm. I think... Um, you know, snitzel, I think, you know, just, I think those would just match up really well. Like the, the carbonation, whether you got it or not, you know, with a heavy bratwurst or something would, I think that would be great, but that's kind of simple, simple minded way to, to pair it. Cause you know, German beer, German food, but that's one thing I would think of. For heffies, for me, I tend to think it like when I'm drinking a heffy, I tend to like think of breakfast. So, like, a heffy get, would go well with, like, breakfast for dinner, or I, I've had breakfast beers. I don't know about you guys, but, uh, oh, yeah. like, waffles oh, yeah. and, like, heffeweizens go really well with, like, uh, like... Eggs. Yeah, eggs, eggs, and, yeah. eggs and pancakes and sausages and, like, breakfast, like, breakfast really goes, goes that direction for me. Yeah, I, and I think, I think vegetables... A uh, salad with maybe some kind of like a balsamic vinaigrette, mm-hmm. hamburger. Um, mm. uh, but yeah, definitely like brat bratwurst, and that would be fantastic. Even like a maybe a a fresh pretzel or something. Mm. Yeah. And I'm wondering about a chocolate cake or, or something. Ooh, that'd be interesting. There you go. Yeah. I mean, banana and clove go well with chocolate, so... Yeah. 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 And normally, they're a lot higher carbonated, so if it's a nice, rich chocolate, it would actually... Chocolate cake, it would uh, it would cut, the, cut that well. I think that would actually be really good. Like, a nice chocolate cake would work well with that. There we go. Oh. Bam. Two. I'm a twofer. <laughs> uh, all yeah. right. Oh yeah, it's great when you can get a couple with one shot. <laughs> yeah, it's just our our time of the year. It's like yeah. Arizona is never humid except for this time of the year, and then the flies come. It's crazy. Yeah, we've had the worst fly year ever here. It like the flies have been just horrible this year, and we don't know why. Like, huh. I haven't seen my bat yet. Maybe it got back outside, but keep looking around like waiting for it to die by me but it hasn't yet diane do you have black flies there in the spring they're mm. done now uh, yeah man i oh i despise it's I like you like get them. through a main them. winter yeah. which is like six mm-hmm. months yeah uh, the lake the lake defrosts and then you can finally enjoy the lake and then those oh, little those flies are awful yeah yeah they'll go, they'll go up under the band of your hat to yep. your shirt sleeves and yeah, nasty. it's like we were yeah. trying everything like feet and mm-hmm. fins no, and not enough. Uh, not enough. running like uh, uh, the dryer softener sheets mm-hmm. and your hats anything yeah. to get rid of them and I don't think anything nope, they're not afraid really of works. no and then we go through this season of these deer flies which are yeah. relentless they're they are they hurt more when they bite yeah. they don't draw as much blood but they hurt and they buzz yeah. your head and uh, you know, all around you and they're you know and now we're back to mosquitoes right now if it rains again we'll have more mosquitoes the, everything's pretty much done except them so yeah 
You're really I'm selling so Vermont to me right now. Like I've I've considered moving there, but you're you're selling yeah, it so well. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean it's it is a nice place. It's a very nice place. <laughs> um, cost of living is high. Housing is almost not available right now. Yeah. I sold my house and I got I have a summer camp, so I'm living in my summer camp. Moving to Florida because of the taxes. Yeah. I mean, Florida and Florida needs a blue voter or two, so maybe yeah. I can help there. Um, <laughs> but um, you know that. Uh, the taxes, the tax aspect, you know, I'm getting ready to retire and, you know, my financial advisor's like, you should probably go. If you're thinking of going, that's not a bad thing. So it's a beautiful place. It's a wonderful place. Mm -hmm. um, my family still lives here, so I'll keep coming back. Um, but it is, um, it's hard. Our house sold in, in minutes, you know, like put it on the market a Tuesday morning and by Wednesday night, we had all the offers we could deal with and just yeah. pick one. You know, everybody's over what we're asking. So, but it is so. Yes, it's, it is is a great place and a beautiful place. But it's got some challenges around just population. No. Four hundred. We went up on population to six hundred forty-three thousand, and you try to have a modern society with six hundred forty-three thousand people, and the taxes are just yeah. difficult. Yeah. So there's just not a lot of us, and uh, no. so yeah, it's beautiful. It is a beautiful place, but. Yeah, I'm going to wear some endless summer, so I don't have to, you know, face think, my butt off anymore. I think Indianapolis, which is just like 45 miles north of me, has twice the population that your state does. I know. I think, it, I think I know. it's like, I think it's around yeah. like 1.3 million. Like, I know. I know. We're just so little, and and yeah, I think we're one above like freaking wyoming or something for population yeah. so yeah we're very very small we know it and oh. uh but well, i think we gained they say we gained a lot of population um because census was in 2020 mm -hmm. um climate and covid refugees yeah. people leaving and so we're gaining populations like whoa we haven't gained it in a long time um my, so we'll see what happens but my city which is like bloomington is is a little city it's it's a nice like big town, little city. I think we're at one hundred and forty, five hundred and fifty thousand people. They are actually yeah. expecting it to double in size in the next ten years. Which, so they're going yeah. around like they're knocking down a bunch of old houses and all this stuff and building all of these high rise apartment complexes. It's like driving all of us insane. Yeah, I was so listening weird. to a podcast. It's an older one, but from uh, Sun King. Mm -hmm. In, in Indianapolis, and they asked something about Bloomingdale, and the guy's like, he's like, I, I don't even know where that's at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep. All right. So, do we want to do try to do any of the questions from the syllabus? You said, Bender, you uh, probably could ask a lot more than what you got, or yeah, I took... John, you had a couple things to look at as well. Yeah. Um. Uh. I had section A and B. Uh. Taste and flavor and identify normal flavors of beer and their source that one was a little little weird but um so i'll start with uh first question is uh name the six basic flavors and this is like through the tongue oh okay mm. sweet bitter uh salty salt um umami acid as, yeah, I think acid. No, 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 I'm, no on acid. So you guys got sweet, salty, bitter, umami. I think I heard one of you guys say sour. Yeah. All right. And there acid, is one, sour. Okay. Yep. There. Foul. Yeah, I guess. Yes, you're right. And then there is one other one that was added later. Fat, which Fat. isn't. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which Fat. hasn't been officially added, but they're like, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so was, in the Cicerone world, they're counting it. It was in the the thing uh, that I watched today uh, through for the CBS, CBS exam. Mm -hmm. So they're counting fat. Okay. okay. And also that was also listed in Randy Mosier's book. Yeah. 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 So I don't know if Cicerone is following Randy Mosier because they obviously they they do like him and it is a fantastic book. Mm -hmm. Um, next question. What is mouthfeel? Oh, that's an interesting question. Uh, and this question comes out of 
the uh, beer scholar um, exam. Yeah. So Mouthfeel well, is yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, Bender. Yeah, Mouthfeel is literally the feel of the liquid in your mouth. How it it either coats it or dries it or um, yeah. It, it's it's kind of difficult to actually answer that. Like <laughs> it's kind of an ab abstract question. Um, yeah, it's a texture thing. Yeah. In, of this liquid in your mouth, and yeah. and how do you perceive it of? Yeah, dryness, that, astringency, percent, um, like, per heavy, heavy body, low body. Yeah. You know what? What do all those things mean within your mouth? Are Carbonic. we getting close, John? Yep. Um, Mouthfeel is the body and other physical sensations from the beer. Okay. <laughs> and um, next question. Um, there's more than. There's several answers, but name four aspects of mouthfeel. Uh, four aspects of mouthfeel. So you'd have drying, uh, cloying, um, slick. Is that one of the, like, is that what you mean? Mm -hmm. I think it is. And, yeah. Uh, and bite or heat. Heat? Oh, heat oh, is warmth. one for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oily, is that one or would you call that slick? Is that the same? It's not listed in here. So, okay. and this, this is coming from Chris Cohen, but uh, body, carbonation, <clears throat> warmth, the heat, creaminess, astringency. Okay. So I said drying okay. instead of astringency, yeah. but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then my second section, let me minimize here. Um, <coughs> Um, okay. I feel like I lost my video for a second. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, for, come on, my internet's, oh, there it goes. When I have identified normal here and, um, oh, Jeff just responded. They had a, a crane get struck by lightning at work. Oh, fun. You're in, you're in Florida. That happens. Better than a hurricane. <coughs> Identify normal flavors of beer and their source. So that one is a little weird to me. Um, the normal the normal components of beer are water, malt, hops, and yeast. Um, within water, you've got different minerals that impart aroma and flavors. Um, but you got your malt, hops, and yeast that add normal, normal flavors to beer. So, um, it was just like an interesting section, like to try to come up with questions. Like I can ask you guys, like, um, In a black beer, what are the common flavors that you might detect in a black beer? A heavy roast, a coffee flavor, a potentially a burnt flavor. You got all three. Maybe? You yeah. got all three right there. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about in a light amber beer? Multi, sweet. Um, um, maybe toffee. Maybe. maybe. Maybe it's not dark enough yet. Mm -hmm. Not dark enough yet. Yep. Graham cracker, maybe. Yep. Is there more? <laughs> Bread crust and biscuit. Bread crust and biscuit. When they say and biscuit, they don't mean like the, the biscuit, you know, for the breakfast sandwich, right? They mean like English biscuit, after yeah. after dinner biscuit. All right. Yep. Yeah. All right. And then that an brown biscuit. beer is... Nuts, toffee, chocolate, dark, toffee. dried fruit. Yep. Um, pale beers is uncooked flour and bread dough. Golden beers, white bread, white uh, wheat bread, water cracker. Mm -hmm. Amber, toast, caramel, pie crust. Pie 
months. Um, so it's just an interesting, mm -hmm. um, interesting section in the book. I don't, I did all the six uh, roads to Cicerone and I don't remember yep. there being a whole lot on that section with the yeah. taste and flavor. So mm -hmm. I kind of went outside of Cicerone really to, um, Oh, it's so if, and the, one of my questions comes right back around to that of you talk about the diff, you know the the increasing color of a beer and the expectation of what that brings mm. and then what are the what are the ones that don't meet that expectation what are the beer styles that don't meet that expectation which you know what's a really dark beer that doesn't have those flavors that you're expecting black uh, Schwartz beer black Schwartz IPA. beer Black, Black IPA, IPA. Yeah. Belgian, Belgian dark strong. Yeah. You might get the candy sugar flavor versus the heavy malt because they substituted. It's still really dark, but like those substitutions. So that's that's kind of what was coming out that I thought about this, you know, this uh, tasting, this discrimination tasting that they look the same, mm -hmm. but there's differences in flavor and why yeah. kind of thing. Like you, they're not going to give you a a stout and a, a whip beer, you know, they're going to give you, a, a, you know, a stout and a four and extra stout and say, what's it? So that, that question of two really dark beers or darker or dark ambers, like a double or, or, a, I don't know, American Brown or something, they're kind of potentially almost similar in color, but what makes them different? So that was, that was where I went with one of my questions of you're going through all these, you know, those flavors that, what are the expectations and where are the ones that are different? Because they're kind of sure. like setting you up for that, in a way, setting you up for that distinction or that discrimination testing for the flavors of, they look the same, mm -hmm. now what? You know, now how do you tell them apart? Kind yeah, of with, and with those dark beers, depending yeah. on the grains you use, if you use black patent or <laughs> uh, roasted barley, you're going to have that dark yeah. astringency um right. right and uh but if you use carafa one two or three it's a de-husked um oh, yeah grain yeah. so you don't do that but when i brew either whether it be a schwartz beer or a black ipa uh -huh. i hold off my dark grain in a separate bucket i mill it separately from all my light grain and just before i start the sparge yep. i add the dark grain in you get the color, but not the roastiness, the astringency. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, so it just depends on how you brew and what grains you use because yeah. being able to use these un, um, uh, de uh dark grains, you're not going to get the astringency, ashtray, yeah. coffee yep. that you might get. Got it. Cool. All right. What do you got? Any more on that, John? Any more questions? Uh, no, I think that was kind of it. How, how were those questions? Good. Good. I think, it's yeah, just, I think it yeah, is. It was just it's... a weird subject not to be able to crack open the road to Cicerone. Yeah, I read yeah, it. I yeah. mostly, like, finding my stuff was actually difficult as well in Road to Cicerone. So I ended up <laughs> doing most of my research through the Chris Cohen book, like, yeah. in which uh -huh. had a great okay. section on this specifically. Which is the yeah. next, yeah. And which section do you have? Me, it's, I think See? it's the pow next section, which is the uh, off flavors and where they come from. Okay. Yeah. Do you have um, John Palmer's How to Brew book? I do. I haven't read it, though. Okay. It's oh, a, it's, a, it's a good book. It's um, on the list. Actually, I, I teach out of that book, so uh john palmer should be paying me because all my students have to buy his book um <laughs> but he has a nice section on uh off flavors and then um randy mosher's book tasting mm -hmm. beer has a pretty yeah. good section on off flavors yeah he did like he set it up like little uh flashcards mm -hmm. randy mosher so you know if you copied them out you got your own set of flashcards on off flavors Rob is, is I lent out my version, my my copy of Tasting Beer, so it hasn't come back yet. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. What do you got for some first moth flavors as All we wrap right. this baby up tonight? 
So I went a little bit different direction. I went, uh, what is trans to non all and what causes it? Trans to non all is oxidized beer, uh, which gives you a cardboard, papery, papery yeah. um, Let, um, stale. Mm. Yeah, the, um, the cardboardy flavor. Yep. Um, what causes this uh, could be like uh, improper packaging um, with the uh, uh, with capping and letting oxygen in. Um, you could pick up oxygen in uh, bad transfer from, say, like the fermenter to the bright tank. Yep. Uh, the bottling line not not uh, capping on foam or sealing your lid on foam. Um, and that was not just plain old age, right? That or age or improper storage heat. Yes. That's not that one so much, is it? It's both. Okay. Yeah, so it can it can come from aging as well. So, okay. and then going back to the basic flavors, uh, umami, the soy sauce, savory, um, uh, an old oxidized beer is considered umami. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys got that one. All right, what is autolysis and what causes it? Autolysis is, do you wanna go, Diane? Nope. Okay. <laughs> I don't know that Autolysis one. is uh, the dying and decaying um, oh, uh, oh, yeast. Okay. Okay. Um, it, leaving beer on yeast for too long, the yeast die off and then start to autolysize Right. and give okay. you like a beef broth flavor in your beer. Yeah, yes. so you can potentially try to avoid that by decanting if you have a bottle conditioned beer, potentially, but it's still, well, the, still the bottle potential is there. Well, bottle conditioned beers, those, that yeast is put in fresh yeah, and alive. Right. I think it's you would have to go a long time. Really but old. this is like, yep. I don't know what commercial brewery would ever do this because you need to get that beer out of the fermenter, get it packaged and get it sold. But if you're home brewing and you brew a batch and forget about it for six months. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know where you're going to run into it unless you're doing like say in a commercial brewery, doing multiple generations of mm -hmm. reusing the yeast maybe, but yeah, I'm not sure that's one that you really see too often. It could happen. <clears throat> it could happen in specifically lagering, where yeah. the yeast has been left on too long, mm -hmm. and you have an issue with your cooling jackets, your glycol system, where it overheats, and that can cause <clears throat> issues, like things along those lines. So it is definitely possible to happen in a commercial environment. It's unlikely, but yeah. Good one. Yeah. Good one. All right. All right. What style? Is DMS acceptable in? Cream ale. Genesee cream ale. <laughs> um, DMS is, yeah, you might get it in uh, some light lagers. Yeah. Um, the cream ales, um, I even think in some like the European like Czech pills and stuff, it, a light. DMS is acceptable. Yeah. Specifically, he stayed to light lagers as the the one that you yeah. expected from. But yeah. <clears throat> I think I think when any kind of rock. pills or like any like any kind of that kind of lager, you you can get some without it being really an off flavor. Um, I think Rolling Rock was really known for the DMS because they vented out a tall stack and then it re-steamed and rolled back in yeah and just kept rolling <laughs> when uh when rolling rock wasn't made in the trope anymore people are like dude where's, our, where's our dms yeah <laughs> all right ready? Ready our beer. yep what is the most common cause of diacetyl and how do you prevent it Well, it's a lot about green beer and maturation, some of it. Like the yeast will work out some diacetyl. It's about the cool, how fast you can cool from the kettle to the fermenter. 
is and cooling quickly is important for diacetyl she thinks maybe not so diacetyl is a natural component of fermentation um as the yeast eat they excrete diacetyl if given enough amount of time and doing a diacetyl rest Mm -hmm. so heating up if your beer is at six fermenting at 65 if you heat that up to 72 towards the end of fermentation um, and lagers, if you go from, say, 50 to 60 degrees, you allow the yeast to reuptake the diacetyl. Mm-hmm. And that's called the diacetyl rest. And another way that diacetyl is produced, and this is Bender's favorite, is peucoclus in a draft line system from poorly maintained draft lines, where you grab that beer. And the brewer did everything right in the world, caked it beautifully, shipped it, and they didn't clean the draft lines. Yep. Actually, that is the most common place that you will find diacetyl is in infected draft lines. So, yes. <laughs> um, I know what you're talking about, Diane, but I, I can't remember exactly what it is with the cooling the uh, cooling ward from that is dms that's dms dms yeah. oops wrong one yep uh smm to dms um that yeah with uh being able to let it properly vent out mm-hmm. um the malts the malts that are coming out today are really really good they're modified well but the adage is if you use pilsner malt you have to do a 90 minute boil mm-hmm to convert it from SMM to DMS and let it go off into the atmosphere. Uh, So I still think everybody pretty much in the brewing world does a 90 minute boil with Pilsner. You don't have to anymore, but I don't think that's ever gonna go away. Um, But yeah, being able to get it cool fast so it doesn't re-uptake DMS. Thanks, John. No problem. Thank you. And that's all yeah, the question. I still do all of my beers 90 minutes if I use any Pilsner. Yeah. Just because it's one of those things that has been done forever and and are the malts that are coming out now are amazing, but mm-hmm. just do a 90 minute just to be safe. I'm looking forward to going to malt school in October. That'll be a lot of fun. So Yeah. Cool. No, it's yeah, there's just so much with there's just so much with malt and it's like it's crazy water is water um depending so on where you're at water. in the world um being able to remove chlorines um and being able to to adjust with salt but like there's so much with malt hops and yeast and especially with with hops they're coming out with new ones every year and but all these different malts and these different like heritage malts that they're bringing back uh-huh. like different pilsners and um and then yeast it's like it's crazy i was writing my lecture for yeast and the different all the different yeasts and i'm like dude i'm not typing all these up like go yeah. look at it yourself uh-huh i did all the base malts all the roasted malts all the stewed malts and i'm like you can go look up your own yeast yeah, I hear you. All right. Well, mine was a mine section was really kind of weird. It was kind of like, well, what's the Cicerone certified Cicerone test going to be like? So it was a little weird. So, yes. um, you know, the, my first question or what are the three exercises that are part of the certified Cicerone tasting exam? Three things. Comparative, off flavor, and a practical. Yeah. The video. Yep. Quality, practical. Yep. Oh. All right. The second one I asked uh, when John was talking about, like, you know, you expect beers as they get darker to have more malt pronounced or potentially more malt flavors or these flavors give some examples of where that's not true. Like the Belgian double, the Belgian dark strong with the candy sugar, you know, giving the color more than the malt. So that, that aspect, thinking about it that way. So my last one is name four beer styles that are expected to be hazy and then if given two of these beers at a tasting how else would you tell them apart so so we got to name four hazy beers first yeah okay 
That's pretty easy, actually. We, we tasted We've two tonight. We've got three so, tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, three. Yep. And then you just add in hazy IPA, and there you go. Yeah. Or West, or then, West Coast, or uh, yeah, no, East Coast IPA. All right. And so then, you've got a bunch of hazies in front of you. How how would you tell them what's going to be distinguishing in the flavor or the aroma to tell them apart? Well, with New England's, it's mm-hmm. about it's about the malt, or not the malt, sorry, the hops, mm-hmm. and then like a half or a wit beer. It's going to be about yeast. Was mm-hmm. Keller beer? Yeah, Keller beer is one of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's a lager, so it's um, not going to have the yeast. Yeah. Uh, correct. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're going to be looking at maltiness. So differentiating hops versus yeast versus malt mm-hmm. yep good and that's what they talked about in the you know i think you listen to the road to cicero and tasting together thing of narrow it down to what's your what's your presence or absence because if you're trying to figure out every taste yeah then then you make yourself crazy but if you know in the hefeweizen clove should be present yeah. okay if you taste this one is not present so you know that that kind of thinking so so i didn't get a lot of questions out of out of my section but yeah if we want to do some more vendors to more of those off flavors i need yeah. i need work there i know that much i'm happy to do so. my section again if you guys want to move on to the next couple sections that's fine um because i can tell you that i need to study that section a lot more as well so looking at it i'm, I'm still working off of the I don't have number five uh, syllabus in front of me, but looking at the one previous one, the next section is ingredients and processes. Okay. So uh, if you want to present a few more off flavors or yeah. questions about off flavors, sure. yep. um, Diane, if you want to do ingredients, I'll do process. Okay. Uh, I don't know about that. You already know the process and ingredients. Maybe you should do something else. <laughs> I'm just trying to give myself some easy homework here. No, yeah, no, no, I hear you. that's not the point. <laughs> yeah. What do we want to drink next time? You talked about, you know, adding on and doing some, uh, bringing whatever we taste, bringing some food pairings with it. But what do we want to look at? You, one of the, we have got Patty's list. Um, just wondering, um, would it be easier? Would it be easier for everyone to find beer if we did? regular guinness versus uh the extra uh, which one is that um, for an extra so or yeah thank you mm-hmm. yeah Just yeah i think i can what I we can, can find probably that. all find anywhere in america so get it get us and get us for an extra stout yeah yeah oh by the way i did finally uh they did have bass um and oh, yeah? that's, uh, oh. and i drank like i have not drank that in forever and I drank it. It was like, oh my god! I forgot how much I love that beer. Like, yeah. I love bitters. Bitters are. I love that style. Yeah, me too. Me too. Got to go back to England. Mm. All right. So good, good stuff tonight, guys. I yeah. enjoyed that one. That was good. Yeah. Well, and those three beers too. Interesting, interesting comparisons there. Cool. Perfect. All right. We'll see if we can get uh, Jeff in here next week as well, but sounds good. All right. Awesome. All Thanks right, guys. Great seeing you guys. Have a good Thank one. You. See you guys soon. Take care. Bye. Have a nice night. Be well.